to Mark chapter number 9. The book of Mark chapter number 9, and we're going to begin reading in verse number 38 of Mark chapter 9. I want to preach to you this morning on a, on a question that I've been asked many times. Maybe you've had people ask you this question. Many times people who are trying to throw a wet blanket on soul winning, or maybe they don't really believe in what we're doing when we go out soul winning, and so they'll ask this question to somehow try to put you on the spot, or ask this question to somehow prove to you that soul winning doesn't work, and the question is this, where are they all? Where are they all? Where are all these people that you've won to Christ, or where are all these people that supposedly get saved out on soul winning? And uh, you have the numbers in the bulletin here on the back, and it says how many people have been saved. But where are all these people that have supposedly been saved? Well, I'm going to answer that question this morning. And in fact, I'm going to give you three answers to the question, where are they all? Number one, and this is what we're looking at here in Mark chapter 9, verse 38. Number one, they may be in a different church. Let's, let's read together in Mark chapter 9, verse 38. The Bible reads, And John answered him, saying, Master... We saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us, and we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me, for he that is not against us is on our part. So number one, where are they all? Where are all these people that have been saved? Number one, they may be going to a different church. You see, there's a big difference between getting saved, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, and wanting to get in your car, drive to a church that you've never been to, where you don't know anybody, and maybe even to drive to a church like this. You see, some people would rather not come to a church like this. Some people, and if you think, think about this for a moment, of all the people that we win to the Lord, you know that many of them have an aunt or an uncle, mom, dad, someone in their family or in their circle of friends who goes to some other church. And those people never won them to the Lord, of course. Those people never gave them the gospel. But as soon as they hear that they've been saved, as soon as they hear that they uh, believe on Jesus Christ, they're, the first thing they're going to do is try to invite them to their church. And uh, they, won't, they won't get anybody saved, but they'll take people that you've won to the Lord, and they'll get them to come to their liberal namby-pamby church. Now, in the story here in Mark chapter 9, we see here people who believe on Jesus Christ. They're serving Jesus Christ, but they were not following with the disciples. Now, let me ask you something. What church do you think these men in this story should have been going to? Obviously, they should have been following with John and Peter and James. They should have been in that church where Jesus was the first pastor. Uh, they should have been going to the greatest church at that time, but they didn't. I wonder if it's because they maybe just didn't want to be that close to Jesus, or maybe they just didn't want to be around these apostles who were so zealous and, and uh, so on fire for God. They wanted to go to some more namby-pamby, liberal, sissified little church somewhere where the pastor doesn't preach on sin or maybe uh, where the soul winning is not emphasized. Hey, not everybody can handle coming to a church where uh, the Bible's preached and where sin is called out by name. And so just because they're not willing to come to Faithful Word Baptist Church, that doesn't mean they're not saved. There are people who've been saved for years who wouldn't necessarily come to Faithful Word Baptist Church. There have been people who've been saved for years and years and years, and yet they choose to go to a liberal church. They choose to go to some community church. They don't go to an independent fundamental Baptist church. Why? Because they don't want to be that close to Jesus. They don't want to be that close to people who are true disciples and following Jesus Christ. You see, this church is for those who love God. This church is for those who are on fire and zealous for God. This church is for soul winners. And so, anybody's welcome in this church, of course. And, and boy, many times people get saved and immediately join and come in and, and, and start coming to our church. But the point is, of all the people that get saved, not every one of them is going to be willing to attend our church. Let me ask you, does somebody have to come to our church in order to be saved? No. Does somebody have to go to Faithful Word Baptist Church in order for us to pronounce them saved? No. 
The only thing a person has to do to be saved is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And so everyone that believeth on Jesus will be saved, whether they come to this church or any church ever. And so where are all these people that we've won to the Lord? You say, Pastor Anderson, if you've won all these people to the Lord, they should all be here in your church. Well, no, that's not true because many of them are going to a different church. Some of them are going to mom's church or their uncle's church or their aunt's church or their cousin's church, their friend's church. And so that's where they're going. They don't come to this church because they prefer to go to a, a mellower church or whatever you want to call it. But number two, uh, where are they all? Well, number one, you know, that they could be in a different church. But number two, maybe they're just too busy with the cares of this world to even come to church at all. Let me read this for you. You don't have to turn there. 2 Timothy 4.10, uh, the Bible reads, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. You see, let me read this for you too before I go on. Matthew 13, 22. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. You see, there are many people who are saved. They're Christians as Demas was, as Crescens was, as Titus was, but they allow the cares of this world to choke them out so that they become unfruitful. They get so busy with their boat. They're so busy with their new car. They're so busy with following sports. They're so busy with the things of this world that they just don't have time to come to church even on Sunday morning, let alone to come back on Sunday night or to come back on Wednesday night. They just don't have time for church. And so they're so busy with the cares of this world. Let me ask you, does that mean that they're not saved? Of course they're saved if they believe on Jesus Christ. I mean, if they truly believe that they were a, that they're a sinner on their way to hell, but they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, that his death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood that he shed is a sufficient payment for their sins, and they believe that through faith of Jesus Christ, they'll have everlasting life and be saved forever, of course they're going to heaven. But what if they're too busy to come to church? Because the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and all the, the things that the world has up has choked them out to where they don't have time for the things of God. Hey, they're still saved. They're still going to heaven. And so that's why, that's where many of them are. Where are they all, Pastor Andrew? Well, many of them are in a different church, a more liberal church. Where are they all, Pastor Andrew? Number two, maybe they're just too busy with the cares of this world to even mess with church. But number three, why, where, where are they all? Number three, many are shy or just too afraid to come to church. Let me, let me read this for you in John chapter 12. The Bible reads in, in John 12, 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. You say, well, I'm not really sure those people were really saved. Well, look, the Bible says right here, nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. The Bible says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Hey, believing on Jesus Christ is salvation. And yet these people believed on Jesus Christ. They were saved, but they would not confess him they were afraid to identify with it. They were afraid to come to church. They were afraid to be seen going to church. They were too shy, uh, maybe, or whatever. Look, there are people who are just too shy and afraid to come to church. Think about it. Some people have never been to church their whole life. You think they're just going to get in a car, drive to a church where they don't know anybody, walk into the service, introduce themselves. It, look, some of us would not have a problem with that. Other people are too shy to do that. Does that mean that they're not saved because they're shy or because they're fearful? Of course it doesn't mean that they're unsaved. And again, that goes back to my first point. Why some people will go to one of these more liberal churches that did not preach them the gospel, that did not win them to Christ, the reason that they'll do it is because they have a friend there. They have a family member. They know somebody there. They're going to be much more comfortable going to a church where they already know somebody.